Hello everybody, Bubbles Zest here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. Now there are many bugs that I've noticed in this game, some useful and some quite annoying. So that's what we're going to be going over today, some bugs that I've noticed that I wish Paradox would fix. But before we get started, there are a few little things I need to go over first. 1. We're not going to be covering BBA peace deals. I've done that in the last few Hoi 4 videos, everyone knows the new peace deals are kind of glitchy right now. And secondly, we need to be fair to Paradox. There are 12,000 bug reports on the Hoi4 forums. They cannot reasonably be expected to get to every single one of them. I'm sure they'd like to, but they just can't. This video mostly exists so I can show you these bugs so you can avoid them in your games. And also, it's in the vain hope that this can increase their chances of them getting fixed. So, let's get started with something I think pretty much everyone has noticed before. Turkey making a faction while well, they are a puppet. I puppeted Turkey, but for some reason they're about to create the Mediterranean Entente. And there they go. Even managed to get Italy into it. Now this happens because most of Turkey's focuses like the Mediterranean Entente, join the Axis, join the Allies, have no checks on Turkey being a puppet or not. What should happen here is that these focuses just get bypassed. Funnily enough, there was a similar oversight for Bulgaria's tree when Butter for the Bosphorus released, but that got fixed some time ago. Why Turkey's version of this still exists is beyond me. This really should have been fixed by now. And now we're in the right opposition Soviet Union, and we've got quite a lot to cover. So let's start with this, return democracy to the party. We've done quite well, managed to get Zoniev as our leader, but now let's return democracy to the party. There we go. Now what this should have done is given us access to all left opposition advisors. But as you can see here, three of them are still in prison. Smirnov, Schmalka and Alexander. For some reason we have no access to them. It's a shame that people like Smirnov are still locked up, because his construction speed boost would really offset some of the new economic policies downsides. But it just gets worse for the right opposition. We're in another game now, and here's what's happened. We have a generic leader. What's happened here is all potential right opposition leaders have died. Bukharin, Rykov and the Zenoniites, they're all gone. When the event tries to get a general as its leader, it looks for anyone with the trait Bukharinist, and if no one has that trait, this is what happens. I'm guessing an easy fix to this would just be whenever it chooses a general as their leader, give them the trait Bukharinist. If you actually do this and give any general the trait Bukharinist, it works normally. But there's so much more. And this is probably the big one for me personally. We're currently locked out of the focus tree. We cannot do administrative reforms and we can't do a new fear of revolution. We have no access to the faction or the Supreme Soviet. There is literally no reason why admin reforms requires Rykov to be alive. I'm sorry, but you could be in a situation where Bukharin and the Zonites are all alive, but because Rykov is dead, you have to choose Bukharin which really limits the player and what they can do. But alright, even if that has to be a downside, like you can't do it if Rykov is dead, give these focuses a bypass. Why should I be locked out of the focus tree just because he is dead? It's not like reigniting the revolutionary spirit in the left opposition tree requires Smirnov to be alive. Why does the right opposition have this? The left opposition does it right. If you want the builder of the Red Army, then choose Trotsky, but for everyone else, you have this simple national spirit. Next up is probably the most harmful in terms of gameplay. We have quite a few bad national spirits right now. Junior officers purge, anti-Soviet military thinking banned, and we cannot get rid of them. There's nothing we can do. We, have, we are stuck with these harmful debuffs for the rest of the game. I've heard this is even worse if you do the right opposition's coup, where you're more likely to come across these sorts of national spirits. There really should be a way to get rid of them. You know, Stalin's gone, we can allow some anti-Soviet military thinking, don't you think? But alright, I think that's enough of the right opposition. I talk about them a lot because as I've said so many times, they are my favourite of the Soviet paths to play. And I just wish if these little things were fixed, they'd be a lot more fun to play. So for instance, you could have like a military-led Soviet Union that could actually do something, you know? But it's time to move on. And now we're in the Russian Empire. I don't think many people have noticed this because not many people have played it, but the main upside to this focus tree doesn't work properly. The main attraction, I suppose, is intervention in the Americas, 
which creates the MPTO and gives us national spirit, Russian political interference. So what this should do is add this little national spirit to most of Latin America. But as you can see, it doesn't. There's no national spirit here. The faction does get created, but you have no way of easily expanding it. From what I've heard, this is bugged because it shows the event that should add the national spirit, but it doesn't add the national spirit properly. It's a real shame. It'd make getting new faction members at least a little bit more interesting. Instead of boosting with spies. But hey, at least we got the Dominican Republic and El Salvador. But alright, that's enough Russia for now. Let's go over something else. I covered this briefly in What's the Point of Monarchist Greece, but if any country profits Bulgaria, you cannot create colonial divisions out of them. See, they're not here. They only show up if you tick decommission templates. So, what's happened here? Well, simple. Army restrictions. I think this is an unintended bug. I get where it's coming from, but I'm sorry, Bulgaria is now my puppet. Some random treaty you really shouldn't be able to stop me from creating divisions out of them. This national spirit should just have a fail condition. When Bulgaria's a puppet, it goes. There you go, simple fix. This next one is a funny one. I'm currently playing as the Union of Britain and I've just enforced decolonization. In the meanwhile though, the Soviet Union has just been overthrown. Well, that's okay, they don't really affect us. Except they do. As you can see all the way over here, we are now locked out of our focus tree. We can't do Soviet cooperation and we can't do one true revolution. Both of them rely on the Soviet Union being communist. There's no way it can do Spirit of the Industrial Revolution or liberate the home of Marx. This is another one that should just be fixed with a little bypass. Just had to check if the Soviets are communist or not, give us a little bypass. Simple. This is clearly a consequence though of this focus tree coming out before the Soviet Union rework. This came out in Man the Guns when the Soviets still had their very basic focus tree. Although I will note it is quite funny to see it says follow Cheetah because it's looking for the Russian capital. And right now it is Cheetah. <laughs> Alright, back to Greece and we're just doing the Anatolian refugees. You know what? The ghosts of the past will not return to haunt us again. We're now in coalition with the EEE, and it's time for the Herculeon Convention. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's been cancelled. And the EEE are launching a coup. Now, most people at this point would answer for their failures to form Byzantium. But you know what? Today, Athens will never be governed by fascist dogs. And now the Anatolian fascists have revolted. Now, believe it or not, both sides of this event are bugged, so let's start off with the EEE. As you can read down there, for some reason it's going to try and move our capital to Istanbul. But we don't own Istanbul, in any way. I feel like that this event is meant for horror and fear when you're at war with Turkey, then they revolt against you. But what happens in this situation? We're at peace. Nothing. It's just an instant coup and they take us over. No civil war, nothing. Now you know what's funny? This has actually been tweaked recently. Originally, when you went for the EEE civil war, you'd get a game over, because you wouldn't own any states. So funnily enough, this has been slightly fixed. You don't get game over, but you don't get a civil war. You're just stuck here, which is weird. I guess it is better than a game over, but it's no civil war, is it? And now time for the democratic version, which has an even weirder glitch. So the civil war actually works properly. But as you can see here, both Greeces are the exact same colour. National Union of Greece, 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 Greece. Someone has already checked and yeah, they are literally the exact same shade of blue. But alright, that's enough civil war stuff. Let's go with probably the most mild thing here. We're now playing as democratic Hungary, and we're about to get a responsible government. But for some reason, despite being democratic, we still have no elections. We might be a responsible government, but we're more like a responsible dictatorship. This election event is the only one we get. 
Yeah, again, this is really mild, but come on, just let elections be held. It's one of those little things that uh, is just nice to see. Come on, let's have some elections here. But all right, let's finish on a positive note. Here's something that Paradox has actually fixed. I failed to mention this in the Loyalty to the Cause video, but the Operation Workers' Revolution in Britain used to crash the game. But now it works properly, which is nice. If you didn't know, this little operation removes Britain's cause on Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland. If you do this enough times, eventually they'll rise up, which is definitely a sight to behold. I'm bringing this up because I know someone will probably say, Oh, but Paradox never fixes bugs, which is just false. They do, eventually. And this is just one example that I've managed to notice. Funnily enough, it's actually an undocumented change. I didn't read it in any of the patch notes. Either way, it works now, when in the past you'd just be booted out of the game, unable to do this operation at all. Which is good enough for me. But I think this is where we will finish. We've gone over not too many bugs, but I think enough. They aren't the most game-breaking, but as I said, they're ones that kind of annoy me and I wish Paradox would fix. Who knows, maybe they'll have a look at this and in a future patch they will all be fixed. However, until next time everybody, I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any of your suggestions in the comments below for future videos, I'm always looking for them. In fact, you may also want to comment some of the bugs you've noticed in game, because I'm sure there are many, many bugs I haven't noticed that some of you will already know about. However, until we meet again, from me Bubble Zest, Good bye.